In this demonstration we will see how to use Simscape to model an electromechanical actuator. The model we wish to build consists of a DC motor that drives a lead screw via a worm gear. The lead screw extends and contracts. The DC motor is controlled by a motor servo amplifier. We need to determine the required size of the actuators in our system. We will use Simscape to do it. This is a portion of the model that we will build, where you can see an abstract model of the drive circuit, the motor, and a portion of the mechanical system. We will connect this to a three-dimensional mechanical model in Simscape Multibody to see if our actuator design is strong enough to raise and lower the aileron. I'll now switch over to the model so you can see how this is done. To start, we'll use the command sscnew to open up a new Simulink model with the settings recommended for Simscape models. To begin, we'll need a DC voltage source. So we'll type in DC voltage source and pick a source from the list that is offered by Quick Insert. We'll set the supply voltage to 24 volts. We're going to drive our DC motor with a PWM voltage. So we'll click and drag a line and type PWM and select a PWM voltage source. We'll need a ground block, so we'll click and drag to create a line, type in ref and get an electrical reference. Simscape uses solver technology above and beyond what's available in normal Simulink. So to have access to those settings, we'll connect the solver configuration block. The next thing that we'll need is an H bridge. This will be the driver circuit for our DC motor. So I'll click and drag a line and type H bridge and select that component. These two blocks can be configured to run in averaged mode or PWM mode. In averaged mode, the driver voltage varies continuously from ground to the supply voltage. We're going to select averaged because that will result in a faster simulation. For our early system level testing, this is appropriate. We could use PWM mode in a later stage when our design is more complete. We'll connect the rest of these pins to ground for now. We're not going to run the motor in two directions at this stage. The next thing that we need is the DC motor itself. I'll click and drag and type motor. We can see there are quite a few motors to choose from. We'll select a DC motor. We'll connect the ground, the, low, the minus pin to the ground, and we'll connect the minus side of our H-bridge driver to ground as well. This completes the electrical portion of our model. Now we need to create the mechanical portion. These ports represent the mechanical connections on the motor. I'm going to connect the housing to a point fixed in space, so I'll click and drag, type in ref, and get a mechanical rotational reference. We're going to need to use a gearbox to give our DC motor a bit more torque, so we will type in gearbox, and we'll set the gear ratio to 1 over 5. Then we'll connect it to a lead screw in order to translate the rotational motion into a translational motion. We'll use a wheel and axle block to make that conversion. Then we will use this to drive a mass. So I'll click and add a line, type mass, and select the mass block. So at this point we have our electromechanical system. I will run the simulation, and we can right click on the mass block to see what the simulation results are. We'll select Simlog. The Simscape Results Explorer will open, and we can see that this actuator is able to move our mass. Now we're going to bring in the model of the aileron. In our library of components, we have a pre-assembled subsystem that has the mechanical model of the aileron. So I will attach this here and remove the mass block. When I update the diagram now, we'll be able to see the three-dimensional mechanical model of the aileron. We'll view it from the side, and we'll set the background to be white to make it a little bit easier to see. Now we're only using default values, so when I run the simulation, I don't expect the aileron to move, because I don't expect it strong enough. And we can see that the aileron is simply swinging under gravity. Our motor is not remotely strong enough to move it. So we'll make a quick adjustment to one of the parameters just to get it to move. We'll go in and set the back EMF constant to 40. It's a very large adjustment, but this should be strong enough to get it to move. Here we can see that the actuator is driving the aileron downwards, and if we switch the direction of the wheel and axle from drives in positive to drives in negative direction and rerun the simulation, we can see that the actuator is contracting and raising the aileron. 
So we have our initial design for the electrical actuator. We haven't set any parameters yet, but we can use measured data to do that and improve the design. In this demonstration, we have seen how to model an electromechanical actuator using Simscape.